Well, we're pleased to be joined by Florida United States Senator Marco Rubio. Follow him on Twitter at Marco Rubio. Good morning to you, Senator. Good morning, Jimmy. Uh, good to talk to you. We'll get to the, uh, the the introduction that you have of the VA Accountability First Act in just a minute. But first, I'd like to get your comments, uh, given your committee uh, uh, requirements that you have on Syria and what happened with the uh, probably sarin attack, now that we know. What, what? The Assad regime issue, you know, the Assad regime carried out an airstrike that delivered nerve agents against the civilian population. It's a war crime. It's a horrifying humanitarian crisis. It is a, I mean, it's truly unprecedented. And I think the saddest part about it is that the world seems to have grown fatigued right. of all of this stuff. I mean, it comes to a point now where, you know, this news keeps, it's just, if this had happened 5, 10, 20 years ago, right. The outrage would be extraordinary. I'm not saying there isn't attention being paid to it, but it almost feels like it, people have grown desensitized to this. It's a horrifying thing, and it's not just about Syria. It's creating a precedent for other parts of the world where now the message is you can gas people with chemical weapons and nothing will happen to you. What do we do about it now? Well, first of all, what we should have done, obviously, going back, and that's why I argued early on that uh, we should have empowered Sunni elements in Syria who were not jihadists, who were Syrians, and not these foreign fighters that have now gone in there as a result of ISIS. That, of course, we can't go back in time. So what do we do now? I think we need to continue to work to try to identify and build up anti-Assad forces that are not linked to al-Qaeda, that are not linked to ISIS. There are such people in Syria. Uh, they're not as large or as well-equipped as they've we wish they were at this point, but they exist and they can be worked with. I think we also have to uh, begin to confront uh, Russia on the, on the international stage. It will be a big stage, uh, state, uh, big moment today, a moment of truth at the United Nations Security Council. Um, and I think the third here, and is the most delicate one, is uh, what, what do you do? Do you try to carve out safe spaces in some parts of Syria so that those sorts of elements that we've discussed uh, can, can have an area to operate in? And if we do that, and I'm open to that, uh, we have to be willing to make it very clear to the Russians and the Iranians and others that uh, we are prepared, we're not going to be the aggressor, but we are prepared to take defensive military action to protect those people within that zone from both airstrikes and ground intrusion. Right. So it's a significant commitment. But the, quite, is, the, the bottom line is, is this good or bad for America? What's happening in Syria is bad for America. As long as Assad is there, as long as he's doing these sorts of things, which he will continue to do, Syria will be a breeding ground for radical jihadis. Even if you defeat ISIS, they will reconstitute in some other form. In fact, it's already happening, and they will target us. Oh, my gosh. Um, Senator, let's get to the, uh, the VA Accountability First Act. This is an important element that you've introduced uh, that you get to the president's desk pretty quickly, I would imagine. This is the increased flexibility of the Department of, Foreign, of Veteran Affairs to be able to fire those within that department who do not act in the best interest of the veterans. Tell us about this, and why is it difficult to fire them anyway? Well, by law, you can't. I mean, you have to wait 30 days. So just now we have a case, and the Secretary of the VA, Shulkin, said this over the weekend. There's a gentleman, an, an individual that works for the VA, who was caught viewing pornography as he was treating one of the patients. He can't fire him. He's got to give him the 30-day process that's triggered, a lengthy you know, due process that's provided. And in addition to that, they've got to pay him in the interim. And he, so it, it is, this is not about firing people indiscriminately. It's about the ability to fire any employee at the VA who is not doing a good job. And, and they would have a due process to be able to prove that they were, you know, wrongly accused if that's the case or what have you. But you've got to have some level of accountability in any organization. If you cannot remove people, then they will not be accountable. No. And, and, uh, and it just sets a terrible culture internally. And we see that in private business all the time. Uh, when there are situations and circumstances, people are afraid of lawsuits, etc., and they will not fire people because of it. You have, uh, you have the company beginning to dissolve. It becomes, uh, and, and that's what happens to and any In any organization, yes. you know, if you've got people of bad character and there's bad behavior, it just creates a cancerous internal process and problem that really ends up uh, becoming a real problem for the entire organization. Without question. Hey, Senator, I know you've got an interview coming up in about 25 seconds. I want to thank you for spending some time with us this morning. Best of luck. Thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. I appreciate it All very right. much. That's uh, Senator Marco Rubio, everybody.